Hey y'all, so it is Andrea here at VW Family Farm and I wanna to talk to you just for a few minutes about something that's pretty important, especially if you are raising broilers like you can see behind us. We have a big movable schooner full of Cornish crosses. These are about six weeks old. We've got, we're raising them for about two more weeks. We're raising them out to eight weeks. Some people do seven, some people push it to nine. There's different schools of thought on all that. Um, Ours basically just came down to when we could get a processing date because we have about 600. We're not processing those ourselves. We're getting them processed to sell by the pound, pieced out in all the different pieces that customers are requesting. So that's what we're doing. And I wanna to talk to you about something that is very, very relevant. And it comes up quite a bit in questioning over uh, raising broilers, especially people raising them and processing them themselves. What I wanna to talk to you about is is deep pectoral myopathy, or you are probably gonna commonly hear it referred to as green muscle disease. So what is that, you say? It sounds pretty nasty, and believe me, it does look pretty nasty. What it is, is the degradation or degrading and necrosis, which necrosis just simply means it's the death, basically, of the tissue uh, from an injury or from lack of blood supply, and it affects mostly your most profitable part of your broiler, which is your chicken tender. That innermost, it'd be like a tenderloin on a different animal, that innermost part of the chicken breast. So before I get into telling you what this is, um, I just did want to give you a little background. This was first discovered years and years ago in turkeys, and then later on was discovered in broilers that they use for breeding purposes in the hens. And then since then, in the recent past, it's actually just been discovered and um, it's shown up quite a bit in just broilers that you're raising for meat production. So the muscles affected, like I told you, are the tender, that's the minor uh, pectoralis muscle in the chicken breast, and also the major muscle is the breast fillet. So we're talking the most prized part of the chicken, basically. And those muscles are what are responsible for wing movement. So flapping of the wings is one of the major things that they think causes this. When a bird flaps its wings, which you can see from just that little bit of a clip, ours do quite often, most of them do. Uh, what happens when you and I exercise? It's the same thing in these broilers. Their muscles start to grow and expand. Well, in the case of the chicken tender, that's where the problem comes in because the chicken tender is surrounded by a tough inelastic membrane and then also the sternum bone. So it can only expand so far. And if they're exercising and they've gotten pretty large, that is gonna try to expand beyond the place that it is located to where it can't expand anymore. So when that happens, blood supply is reduced to that area as well as lack of oxygen supply and necrosis or death of that part starts to occur. At the very beginning, it will be pale, maybe swollen, uh, and then it will look kind of, uh, it could look even kind of pink or red, and then eventually it turns that nasty green color that I don't know about you, but I've seen pictures of and kind Kind of turns my stomach. Here's the thing though, if you are processing your birds whole, like if you are raising them and then processing them yourself, you're not even gonna know this is deep down in there if you're not cutting into them and, and piecing them out. So you could possibly be selling these to people with that in there. I don't have all the answers to what to do about that. We are in the same boat as you guys, but I do have some thoughts on it. So there are all kinds of schools of thought on what makes this happen. You can read about it online. A lot of people uh, believe that males are more prone to it than females, although that has not been proven at all. That um, in chicken houses, especially if, if you do a lot of loud noises like mowing around the house or you go in there and you walk too fast picking up the dead chickens and cleaning up and things and you get them to all like panicking and running and flapping their wings or a lot of chicken houses will have like an automatic light that comes on a lot of people think like a bright light will start or startle them and there's all kinds of schools of thought and I don't want to discount that this does happen it really does 
there'll be a lot of flocks that are not affected at all and then some could be affected as much as 25 percent of them that's a huge loss for someone who's put all this money and time and effort into raising these um, so i don't discount that but i would like to encourage you and just tell you that even if this happens to you the entire bird is not lost a lot of times that part will just be cut out and you just go on the rest of the meat is just fine and in fact i've tried to find definite information on if this meat is actually fine from everything i've read it seems to me as if it is fine to eat i'm not recommending that i just can't find anything that says it is harmful to you um it's just very unappealing i don't think that anyone would really want to eat it because it is green and yellow and just very unappetizing looking so the big questions are how does this happen and how can we keep this from happening so a couple things I wanted to mention. Uh, they do have research that shows that uh, a lot of these cases, some of them are monophasic and some are polyphasic. Monophasic is meaning mono meaning one. It's from one event. So maybe like capturing and transporting, maybe you're causing this injury during, during that time. Or it could be poly meaning it's polyphasic it's happened a repeated number of times so you may be thinking like i was when i've been reading up on this and researching uh-oh happening over and over and over have you ever seen a chicken tractor move they flap they run uh it's just it's a you know a lot of movement goes on when you're moving a chicken tractor either this size of chicken tractor or even smaller we've done smaller chicken tractors for years now but here is my honest thoughts on the matter i know it's gonna happen i know it's gonna happen to us at some point and it's probably gonna happen to you if you raise meat birds but all in all we have not had this happen to us yet. And we have moved and raised broilers and raised them and moved them out on pasture uh, for years now, literally years. And we have not had this happen yet. So that tells me, and if you saw some of the clips earlier, our chickens flap their wings. They move around all the time. They have a lot of space out here. There's a lot of light. Uh, there's a lot of sunlight. There's a lot, there's darkness. There's rainstorms. Of course, they're protected, but it's not like I've got them in some controlled environment where I encourage them not to move and they're just in really dim light and I try to keep it peaceful. I don't do any of that. And I know from what I've researched, that's what is being encouraged for chicken houses, for ones that have thousands upon thousands upon thousands. But let's face it, we are doing things a bit differently than big chicken houses like that. And until this affects how we are doing it, I just have to believe that the way you're raising them from the get-go discourages some of these things. I think that if they are used to moving their whole life um, and you interact with them, which you generally do if you're raising a small amount of something, uh, I just think they're gonna be more adapted to it and it's not gonna be as much of a concern for you. On the other hand, if it has happened to you, don't sweat it. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. Um, it doesn't mean that it won't happen again and that there's some surefire plan to prevent it. Because if I took all the things that have been said by so-called experts, none of us would be raising chickens out here like we are on pasture now there is a couple things that i would like to pass along to you guys i do think letting them get outrageously enormous which ben and i have done before we've raised them till nine weeks or a little bit beyond even and they were the size of a small turkey i don't know that after looking into this and researching this that i would ever do that again i think you're predisposing them to this if you let them get too large um, to where their body just can't handle it another thing that i've learned if they have any kind of leg injury which is pretty common to broilers uh, because they grow so fast Fast, you are predisposed to this because they are kind of gimping around just to try to get to food and water so if that happens you might just have to realize that that is a risk you're taking uh, but you will still be able to harvest the rest of that chicken so it's definitely not a total loss 
another thing, there is a lot of research out there that is showing the healthier the birds, meaning if they are getting the minerals they need, they're getting good quality feed, um, their conditions they're living in is good, that they are less likely to get this. And isn't that just like us too? The more we take care of our bodies um, and control what we put into them and getting exercise and all the things, drinking water that they tell us to do, it takes care of so many things and that's kind of the same thing here you're just setting them up for success uh, raising them outside on pasture getting them on new ground quality feed clean water all those things are just things we need to be doing anyway so I know I didn't really give you any clear cut, cut and dried answers. There's really just not any out there. Although I did want to encourage you all that if it happens to you, don't just throw away the entire chicken. It is still good. The rest of it is still fine and safe for you to eat. And don't be too hard on yourselves. What we are doing here on our farm and all your farms out there um, that you're trying to raise your own food and you're trying to do things in a back to the farm back to the homestead type way it's valuable and it's worth it and i'm proud of you and i don't want you to let one thing like this if it ever happens to you stop you because i believe if we all band together and we continue this where we stand up and say you know what we're taking control back of some of our food and some of our dependency on the system then we're unstoppable so don't let something like this derail you or stop you or discourage you i promise you guys it will be okay and it may never happen to you again. So don't give up. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching and God bless.